I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on advanced functions. Let me thank all the viewers and subscribers for watching my videos and for their request. This summer, we are having very special classes on many topics. You can always reach me on the email address given here and know more about how do you join these classes and learn during this summer. We'll talk about piecewise functions in this particular video. I've taken examples from previous test papers and we'll discuss some concepts which are very important in moving forward. Now this lesson is very important for students who are going to take calculus in the next semester. Now, what is a piecewise function? As the name suggests, we have different pieces of a function in one place. That is what a piecewise function is. So we have at least two pieces. So how do we define it? We say a piecewise function is defined on two or more intervals or regions using different rules. That is the key. So as shown here in the graph, we have a parabola, a straight line, and a horizontal straight line. So these are three different pieces shown on a graph. That is a piecewise function. Now each function is defined in different intervals. We will see how, given a graph, we can read the information and we can model it algebraically. Then we'll have questions so that we understand how do we sketch a graph from the given questions. We'll also look into problems related to continuity of a piecewise functions. At times, there are parameters which we need to find to make a piecewise function continuous or to discuss why is it discontinuous, right? Definitely, we are going to look into domain and range of many piecewise functions. One of the very important piecewise function is the greatest integer function. We'll see how do we read and understand it. I'm going to take real life applications in this particular example. We'll see how do we calculate tax using different structures. And then I'll share with you some test questions. Let's begin with a piecewise function. Here on the graph you can see there is a parabola, increasing line, and a horizontal line. These are the three different pieces of a function given to us. Now the question is, how do we identify the interval for each? So can you just write down what are the different pieces here? Well, we have three different pieces. One, this parabola. The second one is a slanting line. And the third one is the horizontal line, correct? These three pieces are there. Their intervals are what? So this point on the graph is at two, right? So zero is the origin and that is the y-intercept. We'll assume that this goes to infinitely large value. And on the right side also, we'll assume that it is kind of a continuous graph, okay? With a discontinuity, at x equals to 2. Now let us see that there are three different intervals. One of the interval here is less than 2, right? So one of the interval here is x, which is less than 2. Since we have a filled in position with this circle filled in, it is x less than equal to 2. That is one interval. The other interval is from 2 to this point, which is, let's read this, which seems to be, each division here is 0 0.5, so this is 4. So 2 to 4 is another interval. So we have another interval which is between 2 and 4. Now in this case, 4 is included, so we'll write equal to sign there. The third interval, which we see is after x equals to 4, so we have interval where x is greater than 4, right? So these are the three different intervals. We will now see how do we define each and every function in these intervals, okay? So let me 
get into the details after reading some more data from the graph itself. So first thing first, let's try to find out the value of the function at different x values. For example, what is f of 0? Well, f of 0 is the value of the function when x is equal to 0. Well, from the graph, it is clear that f of 0 is equal to 2. So we get this value as 2. Now let's find what is f of 2. f of 2 is the value of the function at x equals to 2. At x equals to 2, which is this point, x equals to 2, we get this, which is also equal to 2. At x equals to 4, what is the value? At x equals to 4, we get the value as 6. Right? So that is very easy. How do we read the graph? So at x equals to 4, we have the value as 6. You will notice that at x equals to 2, actually, we have two circles here. One is the filled in, the other one is not filled in. That one is the whole. So the actual value is 2, not 4. Is that clear? Now let's take the next example on the same graph this time. We'll find the value of x for the given value of f of x, right? So f of x is given to us. We need to find for that value of f of x, what is the x value? So the first one here is that f of x is 0. So f of x is 0 at this particular point. So that becomes the value of x. In this particular case, this is 1. So this is at x equals to 1. Is that clear to you? How about f of x equals to 2? So what we can do here is we can just check what is the value. So if I draw a horizontal line, you see there are two values associated with it, right? So that is also giving us the same value of y or f of x equals to 2. The two points here are 0 and 2, right? So we get this as x equals to 0 as well as 2. How about f of x equals to 6? f of x is 6 at which point? Well, if I look at this value, then clearly after this point, all these values are x equals to 6, right? So that means on the x-axis, it is 4. So if x is greater than or even equal to 4, we get the value of f of x as 6. Do you see that? So it is important to understand that f of x equals to something could actually lead to many different values of x, right? So many are associated with 1, right? So in this case, we have many to 1 relationship. Clear? Now let's look into the other aspects. The very important thing here is to find the algebraic equation for the given piecewise function. So now let's try to figure out what is the algebraic model from the graph. So in this case, what we will do is, well, first look, it, look into the leftmost function, which is in the interval from minus infinity to 2. Now that is a parabola. You can get an idea that the vertex of this parabola is at 1. And therefore, we could write this equation as f of x equals to a times x minus 1 whole square, right? So that becomes the parabola. How do we get the value of a? To get the value of a, we can consider a point on the curve. Well, that is a good point to select. So this y-intercept, which is at 0, 2, is the point which we have selected, right? Substituting 0 for x and 2 for f of x, we can actually get the value of a. So we know f of 0 is 2. Substituting 2 for f of x and 0 for x gives us 2 equals 2 a times 0 minus 1 whole square. Now 0 minus 1 whole square is 1 and therefore we get the value of a as 2 which gives us the function, the parabola as f of x equals to 2 times 
x minus 1 whole square and this is within the interval x less than equal to 2. Why less than equal to 2? Because this point is a filled in circle so it has to be included. So now we have solved one piece. We got the equation of the leftmost piece. Now let's see how do we get the equation of this particular line. So we look into the point B and C and get the equation, right? So what is the point B here? The point B is 2, 4 and the point C is 4, 6, right? It's a straight line. So we can find the slope M using y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and then y equals to mx plus b will give us the equation after substituting any one of these points. Clear? That is how we are going to find the equation of the increasing line from b to c. So here are the calculations. So as I am saying, it is within the interval from 2 to 4, 2 is included, we'll consider y equals to mx plus b or f of x equals to mx plus b as the equation of this particular line. The two points being considered are b and c, which are b is 2, 4 and c is 4, 6. As you know, slope is what? Slope is change in y over change in x. So 6 minus 4 divided by 4 minus 2, that ratio gives us slope 2 over 2 is 1. So we know that slope of this particular line is 1 unit. Now, using the equation f of x equals to mx plus b and one of the points out of these two, we'll consider the point b, 2, 4 in this case. So at 2, the value is 4. Substituting 2 for x, we get 2 plus b. And solving for b, we get b as equals to 2, right? So what we did here was that we substituted the point b, which is 2, 4, right? So f of x is 4, which is equals to m. The value of m, just calculated, is 1 times x. The value of x is 2 plus b. Rearrange, we get 4 minus 2 equals to b, and that gives us 2 as the value of b. Perfect. So we have our equation f of x equals to x plus 2. So that becomes our second piece, the line with the gradient of 1. Now what is the equation of the horizontal line? Well, it is y equals to 6, and we know this interval is from 4 to infinity, right? So that gives us the piecewise function as such. So we have seen in the third interval, where x is greater than 4, it's a constant linear function, which can be written as f of x equals to 6 for x greater than 4. And therefore, now we have our piecewise function, right? So the piecewise function is now defined in these three different intervals. The first one being x less than or equal to 2, the equation being 2 times x minus 1 whole square. The second one is a linear function x plus 2, and the third one is a horizontal line x equals to 6, with x value being greater than 4. Perfect. So that is how you can model from the given graph. Is that clear to you? Perfect. So that was our first example. Now let's move on to the second example, where we'll discuss continuity. Now, I'd like you to pause the video, read the question and answer. As we know, we're talking about the piecewise functions. Now here, the function f of x is given again in three different pieces. When x is less than equal to 2, it's a parabola, right? So you can see that this parabola opens downwards, right? So the first piece is kind of a parabola, which opens downwards. The second one is ax minus b. So ax minus b gives you what kind of function? It matches with y equals to mx plus b. So it has to be a line. And the third one is b to the 2 to the power of b. What kind of function is this? a and b are constants, right? Remember, in this equation, a and b are constants. Now let's look into the question as such. Example 2. Continuity and graph. 
So we are looking into continuity and the graph of the function. The question is, find the value of constants a and b that can make the function continuous. So therefore, we have this particular function, two constants a and b are not known to us. We need to find their value so that this function becomes continuous, right? So the third piece is a straight line, horizontal. These three pieces can be continuous only if they join together at their intervals. Do you see that? At the end points of the intervals. So that's the key. Now, let's define, write down this data in a format easy to understand. So we're looking into three different for intervals. One is x, which is less than or equal to 2. The other one is between 2 and 6. And the third one is greater than 6. Now, in these intervals, what kind of functions do you have? Well, the first function is a parabola, correct? The second one is a line, right? Is an increasing line in this direction. And the third one is a horizontal line. So that gives you an idea. This is the kind of function which we are looking into. Now, we want values of a and b to make this function continuous. How can this be continuous? Well, it can be continuous if the values at the two ends match. Do you see that? So that first condition should be what? That f of 2 should match, right? Similarly, the other value which should match is this end, which is f of 6. So we have to see the values of at x equals to 2 and at x equals to 6. They should match. Only then we'll have a continuous function. Do you see this part? So that is to say, we are trying to match these and those, right? So we want to match these values and these values. Then we'll have a continuous function. Is this part clear to you? Okay, let's move on and see how do we find the value of A and B using this matching, right? So first thing first, we will consider the values matching at 2. So that is f of 2. So if I calculate f of 2 for the parabola, then what do I get? I'll substitute x with 2 here. Once I do that, I get 4 minus 2 times 2 minus 1 whole square. And that should match with the second equation of a line, which is ax minus 1. Putting x equals to 2 gives us 2a minus 1, right? Give, gives us 2a minus 1. So, so that is 2a minus 1. The calculations of the first one, the parabola value is 2. And therefore, we equate it 2 to 2a minus 1. From here, bringing 1 to the left side, we get 2a equals to 2 plus 1, which is 3. And the value of a is 3 by 2. Correct? So we got the first constant a, which is 3 by 2. Now we can substitute a as 3 by 2. So we have our function that between 2 to 6, f of x is 3 by 2x minus 1. And now to find the matching for the second part, we will match the values at 6, x equals to 6. So we'll find what is f of 6. Substituting 6 for the second piece, we get 3 by 2, which is the a value, times 6, minus 1. Calculating, we get 8. Now, this value of 8 should be equal to 2 to the power of b. Now, 8 can be written as 2 to the power of 3, and we have 2 to the power of b. Since we have same base, the exponent should match, right? So, we have same base. So, the exponents are same. And therefore, we get the value of b as 3. So that is how we got our function. So now, substituting the value of a, which is 3 by 2 in the equation, right? And the value of b, which is 3 in the exponent of 2, we get our piecewise function. Is that clear to you? Now let's try to sketch this, right? So what I've done here is summarized what we just found. So we calculated a as 3 by 2, b as 3. 
substituting the value of a and b, we get parabola for the first leg, right? And then 3 by 2x minus 1 gives us the straight line, followed by a constant value 2 to the power of 3, correct? You see that? 2 to the power of 3, b is a constant. So it is a constant, not an exponential function. Is that clear? Okay. Now let's look into what is greatest integer function. Well, as the definition says, it is the greatest integer function, which is denoted by the square bracket. We also write it like this. Right? So let me write it once again. We write sometimes just a square bracket. Otherwise, most of the time, you see with two bars on the square bracket. At times, we also write the greatest integer function as a floor function, right? So these are two different ways of writing the same thing. So it says, the greatest integer function, x within those brackets, square brackets, is the largest integer that is less than or equal to x, right? It is denoted by, also in this fashion, right, and referred as, the floor function. So when you write like this, we refer this as a floor function, right? So, but both are same things. Basically, what you do here is you round the number down to the nearest integer. That is how you do it. The graph is shown here. The solid circles are the filled in circles, which means that the value for that is the value, right? And these are op open circles, right? So basically, it is a step function, as you can see, right? So this is like a step function. Let's try to read the values. First thing first, for this floor function or the greatest integer function, can you tell me what is the value for f equals f 1.6? That means that if x is 1.6, what is the value of the function. That means we are looking for the greatest integer in this, right? So the greatest integer clearly is just 1, right? So that is how you figure it out. So if it is 1.6, that means you have a point which is somewhere here. And looking at the graph, the value is 1. Do you see this? That is how you calculate. Let's look into the second value, which is f of 0 0.2. So 0 0.2 will be in this region, right? So that value actually gives you 0. So it is equal to 0. The integer here is 0, correct? Let's take up another example. f of minus 2.3. Now this is very tricky. If we're looking for the greatest integer in minus 2.3, is the answer minus 2 or something else? Well, minus 2.3 will be somewhere here, right? So that means we have to move more further, left, and therefore this answer is minus 3. Do you see that? It is on the left side of the bar. So you move towards the left side of the bar until and unless you are on the extreme right, okay? Then you move up, right? So here, D is F of minus 5.9. What should that be? Well, clearly, that has to be minus 6. How about f of square root of 3? Well, this number, square root of 3, you know square root of 4 is what? Well, square root of 4 is 2. That means square root of 3 is less than 2, right? So 1.7, right? So basically, this is 1 point something. The greatest integer is just 1. And therefore, its value should be 1. Is it clear? Okay. Now let's take up an application question. Now this is a very common question in any test paper on piecewise function. The values may be different, but it's kind of like always there, right? So let's read the question one. Under certain law, the first 50,000 of earnings are subjected to 20% tax. Earnings greater than 50,000 and up to 100,000 are subjected to 10% tax and earnings greater than 100,000 are taxed at 50%. Write an equation to model this situation. Use your expression to calculate the tax for earnings of 150,000. I'd like you to take this as a test question. 
think about your solution. Okay, so let's begin with the function itself. How do we figure out this function? Clearly, the function is given to us in three different pieces, correct? The first piece is the bracket where we are saying that the earning less than or up to 50,000, right? So we are saying the value of x is less than or equal to 50,000. In that case, 20% tax is charged, right? So in this case, 20% tax is charged. So the key values is up to this, right? 20% tax. So we could write this equation as 0 0.2 times x value, correct? So that becomes the tax charged on the first 50,000. Perfect. Now, earnings greater than 50,000 and up to 100,000. So we're not talking about earnings which are from 50,000 to less than or equal to 100,000. On these earnings, the tax rate is 30%. So 30% means 0.3 x minus 50,000 because, you know, for the lesser value, earnings up to 50,000, tax rate will be 0.2. Anything in addition, do you understand? That is why we have taken x minus 50,000. Anything in addition will give you additional tax rate of 0.3. So, how much did you pay for the first 50,000? Let's calculate this. So, for the first 50,000, how much did you pay? We pay at 20%. So, 0 0.2 times 50,000, correct? So, which is what? Which is 10,000. So, we'll add 10,000 to this. So, that is the amount which is paid on the first 50,000, correct? So, you can see here, we did minus 50,000. So, because on that, we paid $10,000, clear? Now, similarly, we can write down the third piece where the tax rate is what? Well, anything above 100,000, the tax rate is 50%. So, for that, we get the equation 0 0.50x minus 100,000. Plus, what did you pay for value up to 100,000? You can use the second equation. Substitute 100,000 here, right? So, so what is f of 100,000. We'll calculate using this equation 0 0.3 times 100,000 minus 50,000 is 50,000, right? So let me write 50,000 directly and then we'll add 10,000 to it, right? So that becomes the value. So 0.3 will give us 15,000, right? So we get 15 plus 10, 25,000. So we get this value as 25,000 and that equation is valid for any value of x which is greater than 100,000. Is it clear? So that is how we get our equation. Perfect. I hope you understood this particular solution. Here is the same thing. So what we learned here is that on the first 50,000, tax rate is 20%. So 20% of earning when x is less than 50,000. Now, when the earning is between 50,000 to 100,000, the tax rate is 30%. Anything above 50,000, that means x, x minus 50,000, right? That is above 50,000. The tax rate is 30%. So, first 50,000, $10,000 should be paid. So, we will add that up. Now, anything above 100,000, the tax rate is 50%. So, 50% of amount above 100,000 and up to 100,000, we paid 25,000. So, that adds up and that is how we get our equation. Is this clear to you? Okay. So, we got a piecewise function. Now, you can always sketch this piecewise function as shown here. This is the first piece, second piece and the third piece. From the slope, the gradient, you see it is steeper, right? So, the gradient shows the rate at which it is increasing, right? So that shows from 20% to 30% to 
to 50%. The gradient is showing you that. Perfect. Now, we need to calculate the value for the earning of 150,000. Now, since 150,000 happens to be in the last interval, we'll use the third equation. Substituting 150,000 for x, doing the calculation, we will get the value of 50,000. So that is how you could solve such questions, right? So I hope this concept is absolutely clear. So with that, we come to an end of our examples. Here are test questions for you. The very first test question is to understand how do we read a graph. So here is a graph given to you. I'd like you to take a picture of this so that you can answer or you can pause the video and then answer the questions, right? So straight away, you have to read the information from the graph. <clears throat> graph of a piecewise function, which includes a reciprocal and an absolute function combination, is provided. There are five parts to this question. Part A, write domain and range of the function. B, write algebraic representation of the function. C, discuss the type of discontinuities of the function. D, find value of A, 1, f of 0, f of 2, and f of 3. E, state the interval of increasing. So there is increasing and decreasing interval. You understand? So I'd like you to pause the video and answer these questions and then move on to the second question. Okay. As far as the discontinuities are concerned, let me explain you here that we have two types of discontinuities. Here you see a discontinuity of the function. And then we have the other type right there. So these discontinuities are what? So this is called infinite discontinuity. Since the value of the function is approaching minus infinity or plus infinity, right? So that is the discontinuity. So that is the first one. The other discontinuity which is shown here is called the jump discontinuity. So the value of the function jumps, right? Do you see this? That is a jump discontinuity. So these are the two discontinuities which you can explain. And then finding values easy as we did in one of our examples. You can do it. You can submit these answers to my email and then I'll check and get back to you. Here's a second test question. In this case, we are given a piecewise function, right? So we are given f of x. There's a piecewise function which includes a parabola, absolute function and a square root function. You need to sketch the graph of the function. You need to write domain and range and discuss continuity. You can discuss continuity after graphing or also before that, algebraically find the value at f of 2 and at 5 to see whether they match or they don't match. Okay, That is how you can do it. So I hope you got this question. Let's move on and see what is question number three. Question number three here is based on greatest integer function. It says the greatest integer function is largest integer that is less than or equal to x. It is denoted by this symbol and referred as floor function also, right? Find the value of f of x equals to square root of 8. So, greatest integer function, right? So, it is actually written like this. It's not very clear here. Right? Do you see this part? That is a floor function or greatest integer. The other way to write it, as I said earlier, is square brackets. This is a special bracket which gives you greatest integer function, right? So, I'd like you to write down the answer for this particular question. Now, here is question number four which is, we are again given a piecewise function. So it is, the function is given, the questions related are, determine the value of a and b, that would make f of x continuous. b, sketch the function to verify. 
So I'd like you to copy this question also and then try it out. Here's the last question. The test question here is based on the financial application just as we did earlier. It says, under a certain law, the first 5,000 of earnings are subjected to a 10% tax. Earnings greater than 30,000 are subjected to 40% tax. Okay. So, first 5,000, so it should have been greater than 5,000 only, right? Okay. Or maybe we'll make this, you could change it the way you want. There's typing error for sure. So, we could make this as both as 30,000, right? Under certain raw, first 30,000, let me make first 30,000, is subjected to 10% and above 30,000 is subjected to 40%, right? So basically, we need to define a function in two different intervals. One is when x is less than equal to 30,000, right? And the other one, when x is equal to is greater than 30,000, but, you know, any, any value above 30,000. So write down these piecewise functions. Is that clear to you? That is at the rate of 10% and this is at the rate of 40%. Perfect. So that becomes your question. So these are five questions which you need to do. So I hope you find this interesting and useful. So we learn what a piecewise function is. Basically, it is defined in more than two intervals, two different rules apply. So we have to two pieces. Now these pieces could form a continuous function, could form a discontinuous function. If the pieces join together at end of one and the beginning of the other, in that case it is continuous, right? We also saw how do we read the information from the piecewise function, how do we model a situation, and so all these things combined together gives, I hope, a good knowledge about it. Feel free to Write your comment, share your views. Also, do not forget to submit your test paper, the solved one. In case you have any doubts, you can always write those questions to me. I'll get back to you. Also, remember, if you want to learn from me, you can send an email on the address keyword here. Thanks for your time and all the best.